gosh, there's just some things that really get on your nerves. Okay, I'm turning this up a little bit, trying to get the right trim volume. I want it to be clear, but present, but not clipped, if you know what I mean. I've got a little green light on there, so it kind of gets affected a little bit, but uh, hey, at least it's a professional mic being used today with an iPod Touch, um, which I've sort of used to make a hybrid phone using Skype and Wi-Fi when I can get it to be able to make calls out and uh, or receive calls. And uh, it's okay. It's probably not as convenient as a cell phone, but it was really light and, you know, um, cell phones kind of scare me. They, uh, it's that CDMA chip in there, you know, with Steve Jobs getting brain cancer and is, is Bluetooth okay? You know, I mean, there's a lot of waves. And I have to admit, I felt toxic, tox from the waves, like in my studio at times where my vision is not quite right and, you know, and uh, we'll have to see. We may need to have another kind of, I don't know. I'll have to wear a radiation blanket, you know, like when you get an x-ray, <laughs> when I go in there. Um, but today what we have is we're, we're uh, from the New Mexico and, uh, and this is what's going on. Have you ever gotten to the point where you feel like... Uh, you know, there's just this divide. It may not be your fault, but there's just this divide, you know, that just divides us. And I don't know why, you know, I don't know why, but it's just, it's there. Um, and uh, I'm filling around with this and I'm putting up a uh, scripture here that I'm urged to share with you. Uh, but if any man love God, the same is known of him. As concerning, therefore, the eating of those things that are offered in sacrifice to idols, we know that an idol is nothing in the world, and that there is none other God but one. So you see, we know, uh, that's uh, 1 Corinthians 8, okay? Um, we know what we know and the people defending the other side they can be so nice and they can really um, you know act as if you know the world's a great place and you know cheering on the troops on, on Memorial Day and I just like to say a prayer in Jesus name to bless and keep all those who were fighting the good fight and made the sacrifice of the good fight of faith which is far more of a fight than being on a on a physical battlefield sorry to say but it it trumps it because um it's first of all it's a lifetime commitment not just a certain portion of years and second of all not only does it involve persecution which has always been uh heavy in the united states you don't see it because the uh, official state church whatever the outer layer is um not persecuted and uh, around the world, you see Christians getting persecuted. They have been persecuted just as much here in the United States in the form of gang stalking and just bullying and all that with people that have been on the right side or the side of God or, you know, contending for the faith and, and going down that path. No, you don't see the churches being persecuted much. Maybe now they're beginning to. But um, these individuals that I'm speaking of that I'm honoring today for their service uh, on Memorial Day, the ones I'm remembering, the ones who were in a far, far more vicious fight than, uh, than, than our troops have, have ever could even fathom. And oftentimes these people have to fight it alone, separated from their families, from their friends, from their um, means of employment, and the kind of bully tactics and meanness that comes from just average people that suddenly something gets triggered and they come after them. Uh, many of them have are not here today, of course. Uh, most of them are not here today, of course, because they were persecuted in the United States and then it was buried. All these people talk about persecution in, in Egypt, persecution in, by the Muslim Brotherhood, persecution in Africa and all these other places. 
What about the persecution right here? I have a lot of people that are dead. That I honor today on Memorial Day. What about them? What about the fight that they put up? What about the fact that they were trying to keep it all straight, trying to stay on the, on the righteous side of things and for, through no fault of their own from their loved ones and their significant others, they were killed and then they acted as if nothing ever happened. It was just an unfortunate, quote, accident, unquote. What about them whose blood cries up from the ground but who are, who are uncelebrated and dishonored? What about them who are forgotten what about them who made a place in the United States for the people to live so they could be fake Christians? What about them who, if they were not there, there would be no United States? What about that? If you know what I'm talking about. And I know you do. You liars, I know you do. You try to make it like it's this something against you. You take offense when someone forges a path to be to be honest, to be on the uh, you know to to be um, seeking the Lord. You know you you object when someone uh, refuses to conform to your precious system. You object and even to the point of of murderous intent uh, when somebody uh, won't behave in the manner that you want them to. Um, that's demonic. That's not even human. That reaction. And unfortunately, uh, you know, I've had so many situations, I suppose you could say, where there have been disconnects from people because they, they don't want, um, you know, the, the word to influence their children. They don't want this spoken word to influence their them. And so they just call you evil even though you are you are saying words that would be comforting you are you are trying to to to, to forge a path um and um either by example and or by word and deed that would inspire others and make it a better world a better country but because you see on the other side there's all these opportunities and success they would kill that part of themselves to revisit it later, deem the people who are good evil and the evil people good and put it all on making a buck, worshiping the almighty dollar. And that's what becomes the excuse for society. And I can tell you this, that if that's the case, it won't last. But how many people did not have to be enemies but for this reason that being active in presenting the word of God gets you a social pariah status and, um, and even people deciding to conspire against you in some way um, and being angry that you might influence their children in some way uh, you know when they're trying to get them into uh a commercial situation only that by association, no, you don't know these people who would speak the truth. And then you yourselves would then thus be called the liars of the world, the thieves of the world, and those who persecuted your own children for the sake of money. And it just seems to me, um, you know, it would it wouldn't be so bad, but that you would persecute or or make you know some kind of harm or plot against people that meant you no harm, in fact, meant you only good. On top of trying to protect your ears and your significant others and any and everyone else from hearing such blasphemy, which would be the truth, the life, and the way, which would ultimately save the day. And to a lesser extent, of course, this this is the same thing that happened in, you know, in wars like you know the 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 the, the Revolutionary War and other wars, where people just don't want to hear about it and they just want their lives to go on complacently. And when people are saying, "Hey, they're conspiring to do you in," there something is really up with this. You better change. You know, they don't want to hear it. You become the enemy. And I've seen that happen with you know. I mean, this happens across the board on 
every level of this truth-telling business. That um, So for my Memorial Day message, my heart goes out to the ones who forged a path for the truth and paid the price, who dared to be different and paid the price, who were persecuted as much as in Egypt or any other, say, Muslim country, but it went unrecorded. These are my unsung heroes because these are responsible for you and I being here today, even more so than troops fighting overseas in some private war for God knows what. Certainly not for Homeland Security. So, um, those are my thoughts. I just, I just really, you know, it's from the heart. I mean no harm to my friends who have, you know, children and loved ones who they want to, you know, lead a life uh, of, of, of without poverty or be able to be viable out there. Um, as the Lord Jesus taught, you can be in it, not of it. You don't, that doesn't mean you're barred from employment or barred from, I, I mean, absolutely no harm, but only good. How marvelous would it be if people in business, people in the law, people in politics would be honest in their dealings rather than dishonest or would be convicted by the Holy Spirit, have to repent every time they, um, you know, rather than taking shortcuts and rather than, you know, joining all these old boys networks and things like that, that uh, thrive on corruption. How marvelous would it be if there were, uh, was, uh, there isn't though. The churches don't spawn that. They, um, the young people that come out of the churches in, indeed are um, taught to play the game, you know, and that's, you know, and, and taught that that's what in it and out of it means, which is, of course, the church lying to the people, trying to make it okay that they would um, go out and do what they have to do to make money so that that, that the church becomes, in a, in a sense, a cheerleader for Satan's way, which leads to, you know, all the strife that we have in this country, in this world. Um, that's where that way leads. And um, it just seems to me that, again, with old friends, you know, that I had seen before, and things never could not really be on track unless, you know, I were to agree with them, you know, that the world system is really great, uh, to embrace the world in a love embrace, fire all of our guns at once and explode into space. If I would take that approach and uh, rock out, <laughs> um, then all would be forgiven and all would be hunky-dory. And I don't know about you, but a guy like me, I just, I find that whistling by the graveyard, see no evil, hear no evil, speak no evil, you know, having to live like that, bottled up like that, um, sure, maybe not. You know, maybe I'd be you know free to pursue uh, carnal pleasures and things like that. But you know, um, and give it, in fact encouraged to do so. Um, one of one of which is the gathering of as much money as possible and and sex, I suppose, and everything else. That's fine. I you know I'm not even I don't even look at that. I'm not looking at behavior. I don't care what people do. It, it's we're all on a journey here. We are all souls on a journey. Okay. And if some people decide to engage the dark side and um, basically live out, you know, try to find the spirit in the flesh and live out as spirits in the material, you know, material beings in the spiritual world, if you will, and embrace it for all it's worth and um, live like, you know, the wild children of the earth as carnality, as carnal bodies running after, you know, stomachs and, and genitalia running with legs and running after the next thing, it's fine. The ability then for deep thought, the ability for spiritual ascension, the wondrousness of the Lord and God and the, and the, and the, uh, and the secrets of the universe and all those things fall to the wayside when it comes to crass materialism. And to, um, you know, I suppose it's, you know, getting high, getting laid, um, you know, getting the cool job, living, having the right friends at the barbecue and just having it dialed in, as my West Coast friends used to say. Um, or maybe they still say it or maybe their next generation says it. I don't know. I have a lot of young friends, you know, kids as friends. And um, 
I think the tone, what I pick up from them is they are, you know, fed up with this situation, fed up with what the adults have done to the world, and they want a different world, you know? But let's see what happens. As they, you know, we just can't raise any more generations, um, corrupting them into the way of the world, you know, bait and switching them and telling them they've got Jesus at the same time, or whatever religion there is going on. Or you got the, you know, Mohammed, or you got... You know, you got the um, Yahweh or you've got uh, the Buddha or whatever. It just can't go on any further because there's nothing left to go around. Satan is truly, and that's what we're talking about, make no mistake. Satan is truly a zero-sum game, and when it runs out, it runs out, folks. No amount of, you ask the Aztecs, ask the Mayans. No amount of sacrifice could bring it back. Once it was gone, it was gone. Born of blood and of pain and trauma. The people that think it's funny taking that shortcut, making, uh, making the slot machines pay abnormally, you know, in their favor. You know, just like in the Hunger Games, may the odds be ever in your favor. That just seemed like such a mind control phrase, didn't it? May the odds be ever in your favor. Creepy statement, hey? Especially when they're running out into what they're running into. Especially, I mean, that's um, a good, you know, a, a really great picture of society gone amok. Now, I know you all agree with me. I know my friends out there will agree with me that I'm saying the right thing. Um, and meaning the right thing. It's just that when push comes to shove... Certain people don't want to associate with other people because they don't want it to look a certain way to other people that they may need to be friends with so that they can have some stature with or, or I don't know. It, it's This has happened again and again and I, it makes me very sad. It personally hurts me and hurts my heart where someone would say, you know, you and I can be friends until it in involves being seen in public and then that can't happen because the other people take objection to what you've said and therefore I can't you know to keep maintain peace out there with my relationships I must deny you you know I must deny I'm not Jesus but it's the same equivalent I must deny Jesus in order to keep things on the up and up And or you get something like, well, I used to know you a long time ago, but now I'm not sure who you are. I'm not sure what side you're on. Which means that, well, whatever side they're on, you better be on that side or you're not friends. In other words, if you don't see it the way they see it and you're not on the page they're on, which is a shifting page, by the way, and it is for every all human beings on earth. And and the idea that there's a stasis or some kind of way that's a permanent thing that doesn't shift is incorrect. It's shifting all the time. They have to really work to make it work out. But the fact that you're not over there with, you know, shoulder to the plow as they are trying to make something that's a lie work out to be the truth. The fact that you're not nodding and winking and going along with the pretend game to make it better for everybody so everyone can get along and get their paycheck or whatever they think. Of course, that's not the requirement for a pay. But anyway, that th that's a false um, fear about provision and a false understanding of provision. Usually people that have that kind of idea of provision, they wind up poor. You know, they wind, right? So, denial of um, the truth, denial of friend. Friends, when, you know, when, when the weather's good, when it's okay to be, but then when it's not convenient, when it might look a certain way to other people, there's then this disconnect. And I tell you, that's, that's got to be rough on children, especially. It's got to be rough on people that are, you know, and, and, and I suppose the, 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 the unspoken uh, paragraph would be this. You know, if you people would just shut up and just kind of go along for a little bit, Give it a try. You'd be surprised how good things could, could go, how wonderful the world might just be if you just... And, and my, my answer to that would be, um, 
you mean sign on to the evil to get a good result, which of course happens in the way of recruiting, but then you become part and parcel of murderers, liars, and thieves. But that's okay because we, we cover that up. It's not really happening. What the, the main result is you get paid, you got stuff, it all works out. So it's a material embracing of the world for a certain effect. And, you know, I've, I've kind of looked around and I've, I suppose I could just could say, well, look, let's just forget about all the people that died trying to do the right thing. Okay. Let's just forget about the fact that society took a big crap on them. Let's forget about the fact that the true soldiers who are fighting the real war, um, who are dead, uh, are unsung and, un and forgotten on this Memorial Day. Let's forget about the fact that signing on to the lie pays good dividends and nice social contacts. Let's forget about the fact that the reason those social contacts are there is because you embrace the lie. The reason those, so those opportunities are there for advancement financially is because you embrace the lie. Then th that makes the churches complicit because they embrace the lie encourage you because after all you've got Jesus to take care of your sin nature and that's all we're talking about. So Zeph, why can't you just say that? Okay, fine. It's all just sin nature. We're all sinners. It's all good. I love everybody. Everyone loves me. Every everything's cool. There are no hurties. There are no conflicts. There are no we just gotta fly like an eagle and we're gonna feed the babies and feed the children, put shoes on their feet to the sea, da, da 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 and our solution will heal the whole world. If only we'd just join hands, drop the hatred and the pride, sing kumbaya, share the resources, and enjoy such a wonderful world it could be. All you need is love. Love, love, love. All you need is love. And you could do anything. Don't stop believing. You know, I suppose um, that would have been fine as an instruction when I was maybe 12. But at this point in time, after we've seen what's happened to the world, the idea that the people that most of whom cannot even defend themselves are not even here, who lost their lives in the, in the Great War that's gone on for thousands of years, they have no voice today, yet you do. And you're sitting there congratulating our troops, distancing yourselves from anyone telling the truth. And um, somehow you expect that everything is going to go swimmingly well if you just ignore all that and play the game and get it right and uh, and it's all going to go fine. And I don't know what's happened to people. I mean, you know, I don't know. I don't understand. Would you betray someone and do them great harm and even, you know, hurt them terribly if it would mean an extra boost for you? a few extra dollars of profit, whatever. If the answer is yes to that, if that's what we've done as a society, then we must stop this because if this is continuing, there will be no society. There'll be nothing for anyone. They'll just be screaming and yelling until all are dead. But you see, we've gotten away with it for thousands of years. You know, we could ride this gravy train for a while more why not just have a good time and just let it go? Right. Well then, well, what difference does it make? Why not just let the, the whole deal about Memorial Day go? I mean, what difference does it make there either? That people had paid the ultimate sacrifice, their lives, for this political freedom, um when other people paid with their lives for what you might call uh, eternal freedom. 
paid with their lives. In other words, the Lord called them and they, they, they heeded. And then all their family and friends dropped them. And they were betrayed. You know, glad handers would come around when it was convenient. And then when it wasn't, they were shunned out. You know, association would be together when it's convenient, but if it looked a certain way to others out there, then that person would be shunned. Social pariah for being honest, social pariah for telling the truth, social pariah for pursuing a path of happiness that is a, also a benefit to other people who are in darkness who want to be free as well. Pursuing a path of freedom where all around are people who prefer bondage and lies, which lead to pain and suffering for the whole of society. Would it not then I contend be better for us to pursue a path that is um, in line with God and his word that would be yielding fruit of which would be, you know, honesty, you know, goodwill toward men, a true sense of brotherhood or sisterhood in the world where God is at the head rather than people or associations or guilds or armies or countries isn't a real Memorial Day remembering those people that forged that sort of path who as examples to us all helped to set us free because in the end all we really got to do is die and in that dying it makes all the difference because it's not over in death and I wanted to say something yesterday as we sort of grappled with this a couple of days ago as we grappled with this idea of death, that there are many, many layers. That there's not, it's not over at death. I happen to believe in a form of reincarnation. I can't even tell you exactly what it is. It's not really a one-to-one -one linear kind of thing. But in other words, the point I'm trying to make is it doesn't end for anyone when the life ends. Not, whether you're on God's side or the, if you're on the other side, you know, it doesn't end. You will reap what you've sown. The reason we need the Lord Jesus and the blood of Christ is because we're sinners, you see. Our nature is to do the things that I've been talking about. Lying, covering, and cheating to get ahead. People do it and they don't even know they're doing it. So all people are going to do that to a certain extent or another. So I need to be covered by the blood of Jesus Christ to cover that. You say, well, then why can't you give him a pass? Because... There's a difference between intentionally embracing the world versus using free will to intentionally embrace Christ, which is the antidote for our humanity that is fallen or broken. Now, if you intentionally embrace the world and then cynically embrace Jesus as a kind of a cure or, or kind of an insurance policy, then the Lord sees you are with the devil and after you die, you will pay a price. A very severe, severe, something beyond your wildest imagination in terms of pain and suffering. Now, I haven't said hell as a concept because, as you know, the Lord cannot be obviously separate from his creation indefinitely. You know, there's this illusion of separation. Um... And in that illusion, we have pain and pleasure, hell and death, hell and love and, and pain, you know, all kinds of dichotomies and all kinds of experiences. But ultimately, it all belongs to God because God can't be separate from anything. There is no separate place called hell that God is not, has not created. The Bible says that he created everything that was made. So if, if hell is a real place, that God made it. It can't be there forever because nothing can be... Um, it, because that actually isn't the state it's in. That's not the actual ultimate state of, of being of that situation. In other words, if God is good, God is love, then, and if there's pain and suffering and torture and all that, then it cannot be a permanent state. The problem of evil in the world is um, a matter of perspective. But ultimately, all things go back to God. So 
you know, let's say this goes on and you die in your position, your soul being on a certain side of one line or another. There's, there's a line and there's one side or the other. That's all there is. Whatever you're found, that's the consequences from that will be. So if you're found, say, on the Lord's side, even though you might not be perfect and probably aren't, you're going to the Lord. If you're on the other side, but have led a saintly life, done lots of good deeds, but are found on the other side or on Satan's side of the line, if you will, or the side of the world system or, or you know, the, in other words, if you're not found in the Lamb's Book of Life, then those consequences will befall you. But ultimately, I believe everything returns to the Lord in the end. The fallen, the not fallen, the fallen angels, Satan, everything that is created eventually um like castles made of sand fall to sea eventually. It's God is permanent. Um, the stars are not. So when Daniel talks about stars, he's not talking about a permanent state. You know, because there is no separate individuality from God, ultimately. I mean, if the collectivists knew all this, they'd have a field day with God. They would, they would love it if they could only open their minds and get beyond their carnal prejudices for one second. They would understand, oh, it's, it really is a collective. It's not really a collective, but, you know, they would see that, that kind of uh, spiritual collectivism, that is, we're not separate from each other, and they would really d groove on that. But unfortunately, they will never see that because they are all caught up in the world because they took the world in a love embrace, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, they love the world, and they love the things in the world. And the things in the world, well... They wear out, they're passing. But my issue is with people that would distance themselves from you when it's convenient for them socially and then come close when they really need something from you like prayer because they know your position. They know that your prayer would be efficacious because your position is not a lie. So that would it would, you know, resonate. It would help and indeed that's a true that's a true understanding absolutely so in this masquerade world that we know who's who and what's what you wonder well how many people would be on the side of you know against god let's say and the answer would be well the majority would be they may not know that's exactly what it is i mean they could feel that but i mean eventually they'll come to know that they've taken up a position against God and against his anointed. And would conspire, as it says in, in, in uh, Proverbs 1, to, um, to you know, form a collective and to wait for an innocent one without, and, and, and slay him without cause, taking the spoil that, he, that they can from him, stealing it for themselves. And... Well, those caught up in that, um, as the Lord said in his word, do not go with them because that leads to their spiritual destruction. That means perhaps hundreds of millions of years of torture for that individual that took part in that. We're talking millions here and maybe hundreds of millions before that karmic thing wears out. In other words, that soul is going to be conscious of being tortured for a long, long time. Now, to me, that's like an eternity. So I could, if you want to call that eternity, go ahead, eternal damnation. But that would be a ticket to hell and a hell far worse than anything you've ever been taught in school. For millions of years, literally, for being caught in that particular kind of situation, you know, that's why I would say resist the collective. Resist the collective purse, resist these gangs, resist the old boy network, because all of those end up in the same place, right? They all end up in the same place. I mean, they, 
they can only take up a position and and ultimately they will lay they will lay wait for you know someone they can rob and 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 kill and take what they have and share it amongst themselves isn't that what gangs do and it's all basically a mafia game so they would all do that so therefore they would lay wait for who god's anointed and conspire against the lord knowing it will be their eternal damnation doing it anyway because all they can see is the nose in front of their face this five minutes now let's just say we want peace they'll say okay zeph we'll have peace now be a part of this and be one of us all for one one for all we'll cover for you you cover for us and we're all cool you got it i would love for that to happen by the way we're not talking about really evil stuff here, are we? <laughs> okay, you got it. I'm in. We're running with the pack. We're running with the homies. I'm in. Loyalty to death do us part. I'm in. Take it to the grave. No deathbed confessions. I'm in. But why is it now that I'm reaching my golden years that I feel like I'm looking over my shoulder I'm wondering if God's breathing down my neck just waiting to smack me into millions of years of pain and suffering in hell you know and, and the thing is is you know they, they look at you like you're saying a simplistic thing do this don't do that Nothing could be further from the truth. What I say here on this podcast is a multidimensional reality because Lord knows it hits us in a multidimensional manner. We're fighting a multidimensional war here. There are some great heroes. You know, Daniel was a great hero, showing great courage in the, in the midst of betrayal. If the Lord's people know anything, they know sudden betrayal when there was loyalty. And I think it's terrible that they have to suffer such awful things when through no fault of their own, they meant no harm to anyone. In fact, to their old friends that betrayed them, they made no harm whatsoever, but rather only wanted good things. Nothing bad for others, but good for others. In fact, you know, being of service to others, even laying down their lives for others. Well, and what they got in return was a, a stab in the back. And their blood cries up from the ground, but it goes unaddressed. So people think, well, it must not exist. We're honoring the veterans of these wars for various private corporations. And except for save a few, of course. And yet we're not honoring the real heroes who, who died horrible deaths, fending for the truth against all odds, against their families, their professors, their wives and children in many cases, but because they were born pure hearts or born a certain way and they couldn't, they couldn't just live this compromised existence, they're not here with us today. Yet there were great heroes in this, in the big war, not World War II, not World War I, but the big war, the real war, the war of the ages, the war for the soul of man, the war for all the marbles, the war for everything, everything that matters, everything that has significance, everything that will ever be anything of worth or value, anything that, that would make one take a step on a journey or make a heart beat, anything that would make this life worth living at all is what they would fight for to the very end. And every one of them was in service to all of us. And every one of them we owe a debt of gratitude to. But you'll never have their names on a Vietnam memorial. You'll never see their names 
written anywhere but the Lamb's Book of Life. You'll never see them to thank them unless you're one of them. And then, of course, you will. Right before you realize that you are them and they're you. But that's... We don't need to deal with that yet. Are we perfectly clear today? What I would like is, and I call for a reunion of all people, and all these petty squabblings and all this kind of pride and stuff, drop it. And why don't you for once try to see it another way? Ask the Lord if there's any other way that you can go. Don't, I find it very sad that people are born and they figure out the way to go is toward their own death and destruction. I find that to be, of course, they don't see that, but I mean, when you step back and take a perspective on it or take God's word as a lens from which through, or, or through which to look at it, that's exactly what you see generation after generation. But I'll oh, just get with it. Look, they burned people at the stake for saying the world was round. Okay. They burn people that they've, they've, it, it, the, the new film RoboCop 2014, I just saw it on my, uh, I, I downloaded it to my, I, my iPod, my iPod Touch. It has a little screen, kind of like a phone screen about that size. And I had my earphones on on the plane and I watched it and I, and I thoroughly enjoyed it. I would have liked a little bit bigger screen, but it'd be hard to hold, you know, because it's really light so I could easily hold it right there to have my glasses on. It was pretty cool. Uh, great flick. Loved every second of it. Um, anyway, the whole point was that the RoboCop really became like a pure heart. Good is good, bad is bad. He couldn't. It wasn't. He couldn't think gray area. This this was fascinating to me. He couldn't think gray area. So when he went after the cops that were corrupt, he just started blowing them away one after the other, and went all the way to the chief. And right before. He was uh, confronting the chief and, and about to throw her in jail or whatever he was going to do. Uh, they pulled the plug on him and he collapsed right there. They said, well, he was about to go after the chief. We can't have that. And that made all the politicians nervous. We can't have the RoboCop investigating corruption uh, of, of police, the police department or the politicians, could we? So you see, because of the way robots program, they don't see a gray area. They don't say a little corruption is cool. He just was going to go after any of it, you know? And I think people that the Lord, you know, anoints for certain things, they just kind of see either or. They don't really see like a, you can be all, you know, you can be both. You can have your cake and eat it too. They don't see it that way. You can't punish them for that. They really aren't, they weren't made that way. They were made like that to just either yes or no, kind of like a, they all have a kind of a collective form of Asperger's or something. They just can't see it, a gray area. Or they all have, maybe maybe they're all mentally ill. But they can't just, uh, you know, it's either this or it's that. Now, you could go along with trying to do a double-double, you know, where you just kind of have this sort of corruption thing, but no, it's really okay because Jesus understands we're, and everyone's happy and we're just going along and, you know, we're all just kind of cool and we're all just sort of demonically possessed together and having a great time. And, you know, everyone's relatively happy and avoiding the subject of death at all, to at all costs and any kind of heavy topics. So we talk about, you know, what's going on with the uh, uh, sports and what's going on with the entertainment and what's going on with these various things, the stock market and the weather and whatnot. And we somehow maintain a semblance of social... Um, uh, civilization yeah I really loved uh, Samuel L. Jackson was in it as this uh, TV announcer it takes place in the slight near future he was great they really did a great job Gary Oldman plays the the scientist that, that you know once the, they, they, they tried just machines it didn't work so they tried to put a man in the machine you know, so, so, so people, you know, cause people felt uncomfortable having a machine kill a man. So they put, they tried to do a blend of a man and machine. I found that very pertinent to today's ethical questions. Obviously we know what the answer is, you know, machines, uh, dictating over men would be false, would be of course 
absolutely an abomination and a perversion of all that uh, God made. So, yes, naturally, uh, you know, but you'd have to be able to compromise to see that there might be a way to put a man in a machine, to have a hybrid pulling the trigger because he still has a semblance of humanity. Fascinating uh, ethical topics it brought up. And um, great action, and you know, it was okay. Maybe it's not an A movie. It, probably it's a B movie. But, you know, it's like, I guess if you like Iron Man and, you know, comic book movies and Spider-Man and different things like that and Superman and all these other things and the Transformers, you know, I suppose you'd like it and X-Men, you know. <laughs> and I kind of like all those things. I, I, I you know, I, I do. I tend to, you know, I've really loved comic books when I was a kid. But anyway, look, the point is, why persecute or try to cause harm to people that are pursuing the truth, you know, which is Jesus, but I mean, whatever form it takes, it's still pursuing, they may not know what they're pursuing, but they're pursuing the truth to the best that they understand it. And they know it because everyone just comes down on them. It's like, why, why do you want to rock the boat, they will say. And it's like, well, you know, it's just in me to do. And, if, and of course, truth be told, if they didn't do this, then the society wouldn't be there. The people who are opposing them wouldn't be there. The people that are opposing them don't produce anything. Oh, I mean, they're able to make livings and whatnot, but they don't really um, contribute anything to this endeavor. You know, they're more takers. They take uh, from the society. They take from the environment. They don't contribute to the quality of life which is what someone seeking the Lord does. They, they, they contribute to us all. You know, they, they, you know what, what is formed is the debate about ethics, the debate about how to live, the debate about how now should we live in Christ now that we know what we know, rather than layering it over with some kind of thing of nod, wink, corruption, we're all going to agree, we're going to cover this up, we're going to bury this, we're going to get along, right? And we're all going to get along. And anybody that, any, anybody that sees it differently, you pound them down and get rid of them. And then we can all survive. Well, my friend, if all you're going to do is survive to the very end, then, you know, you've, what you've done is you've built yourself a prison in hell. And that's your karmic lot after death. Have we made it quite clear today? I want to clarify my, you know, this, this idea of hell. I've, the hell that I have, that I've kind of perceived, you know, through the word and through my doing a lot of thinking about it, is really so much more vast than the hell that's presented on the surface. It's so much more painful. It's so much more horrifying. It's so much more torturesome. It's so much more um, hopeless as a feeling. It's so much more conscious that I would call it being hyper-conscious of being tortured and hurt and harmed on a moment-by-moment -moment basis with, you know, wanting nothing but to be out. Now, most people would say, look, how dare God torture me when I did good here? And the answer is, he's no respecter of persons. It just depends what side of the line you're on. It doesn't matter how good you are. You can be just a horrible person and be with God. You can be totally rich and eating, you know, prime rib every day and, you know, and, and throwing crumbs to the, to the guy begging on the street. Guy begging on the street could go to hell and that other guy that's eating the prime rib, he can go straight to the Lord. Why is it that way? Because there's a line, it just doesn't matter. It's whatever side of the thing you're on, that's where you go. So what you want to do is you really want to get on the right side of that line so that, you know, and then a whole other world opens up and you go, oh, I was all worried that I wouldn't get any provision, but yet here it is. I was all worried that my family would break up, yet even stronger than ever. I was all worried that, um, 
you know, the, the, that all my opportunities will go away, yet here's many more friends and many more opportunities than you ever thought possible. This is a common testimony. But you got to be willing to, to, to go out there blindly when you don't know what's going to happen. You can't really predict it. One thing's for sure with the world, though, on the world side, those opportunities that you have are dwindling unless you're willing to do maximum evil. You don't want to do that because you don't want to risk going to jail or having it turn on you in some way, and so you're kind of stuck, sort of slouching and drifting as those things that you have, you realize that nobody has things in a vacuum. They drift away too. So food for thought, ladies and gentlemen. My gosh, I love all my old friends and family that's gone, passed on, and and people I used to be in bands with and, you know, rock and rollers and anybody else. I, you know, I point out things and, you know, lo and behold, people take it personally. Or they take it that, you know, they... Uh, you're not supposed to present another side of things because we, we don't want them to get off the, the focus and path they're on because they're doing quite well. Meaning the workers out there, the people out there. You know, why can't you just say that they are, that it's all good? And I'm not the one saying it's bad. The world is saying that. The world is groaning and screaming and moaning. The world's crying in agony every single day. The world's screaming, I need help, I need help. Zeph, can you help me? Tom, Dick, Harry, Jane, everybody, can you help me? Can you help me? The world's calling out for anybody who will help. We're on the wrong course. We need to, to write the course. Yes, but that'll rock the boat and disturb the status quo. We can't let you do that. So just go along to get along and do the best you can with what you've got. And that's the best advice we can give you. The establishment, that is. There's still, you know, we can name numerous examples of good people. Like, look at people like, you know, that are for the troops and are over there entertaining them right now as we speak. Think about how great they are. Yes. We could play the game of pretend. Okay, I'll tell you what. You want me to play the game of pretend with you? Do you want me to nod and wink with you? Do you promise not to hurt any of the pure hearts out there that are not doing any harm? They just are born that way? You can't promise that? Well, you can't just go harm an innocent being. There's innocent people that are in their 50s they are innocent. They, through no fault of their own. They don't know all the stuff you know. They haven't been through it all like you've been through it. They just, to the pure, the Bible says it this way, to the pure, all things are pure. Now, you know that. So they're not ever going to see it. You know, I mean, I've got friends that just do not see a gray area. They see black, they see white. If anything that doesn't jive with that, it's just, it's out. My brother was very much like that. And I've been like that too. I mean, I've probably now I'm a little bit more cynical than I was before, but I, I grew up like that. You know, and my mother called us uh, pure hearts, but she, but, but in a pissed off way, she didn't like that because she wanted us to, you know, be be loved, and and you know, you have to do that. You you can't be a pure heart. You've got to be willing to, um, you know, have a gray area. You can't just see black and white. And I don't know why we were like that. Uh, they didn't raise us to be like that. That's for sure. We were just born that way. I think in some ways his death and my survival of all those times gave me a victory that everyone had to kind of back off. But then funnily enough, as I went on, I've tried to think long and hard about how I can make this thing work out for everybody. Because see, I really want everyone to be happy. I really want everyone to, to you know, hug, take the mask off and say, you know what, I really love you and I'm really sorry that I had to play this game against you and, you know, and then have the pure hearts go, look, I'm really sorry that 
I uh, had a grudge with you. I know it wasn't personal, and but I now know it was just a theater. It was just a play that God was putting this play on for his own amusement, and we were just following our scripts. And anyway, I'm so glad it's over. I'm so glad to have this hug. I'm so glad that we can move on now with as a family, as one, as one people. Well, sure, that's my what I would want. What do you think? What else would I want? I've even gone even further than that. Uh, a guy like Obama, you know, he pisses me off so much, his attitude, and, and communists in general, but him, he's a special kind of communist. He just really pisses me off, you know. But even him, I wouldn't want any him to suffer. I, I wouldn't want him to suffer at all. Because I think the man is ignorant. I don't even think he knows what he's doing. And if he does, then he's really, really, really pretty evil. But evil people suffer. Do you know what I'm saying? Evil people that do evil things, they suffer tremendously. They just learned in order for them to survive, they had to do evil. It became a habit. It became a bad habit. So the evil that they do comes back on them. In a perpetual cycle, they do evil, it comes back on them, they suffer, their families die, they go out, they, they, you know, they're, they're, they, they, they gather all the money they can and they lord it over everyone, but they're completely, totally so miserable that uh, the only time they're happy is like when Scrooge like, gave away all his money and stuff. When his heart changed, that was the, only, that was the happiness he had sought. I'm not saying you have to give all your money away. Money was a symbol. You know, he changed his ways. There is not a war between the, the, the people of God and Lamb's Book of Life and the people of the world. There is a war of the people of the world and, and God and his anointed, meaning his children. It's a one-way war. There's no war coming back on them. All people want is for them to be happy, fulfilled. And they can't be fulfilled if they're on the side that is, that is the embodiment of murder lies and... and uh, Thievery can be. You can't get good fruit from a corrupt tree. So therefore, that way can't ever work out for anyone. It's failed every time it's tried. Oh, you know, people can, you know, as the song goes, run on for a long time. But sooner or later, God's going to cut you down. Because he, he's just, I'm, you know, he's fierce. He's terrible. He's terrifying. It's like a giant planet with like death rays that come out of it. You know, you don't know. You just want to, don't want to piss the thing off. I'll see you next time. Yes, I've, you know, I've, I hope that this made some sense.